Imagine this, the world's biggest tech powers, nations famous for innovation, are suddenly looking toward a tiny country the size of New Jersey and asking, how did they leapfrog us? From AI to cybersecurity to autonomous systems, a surge of breakthroughs has left global analysts stunned and even France, usually proud of its own technological independence, has openly expressed surprise. Today, we're diving deep into how this happened, what it means, and why the conversation is louder than ever. Hello, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're unpacking a topic that has sparked global debates, reshaped alliances, and redefined how nations think about innovation. The idea that Israel may have surpassed the United States in certain technological fields, and that countries like France are openly acknowledging this shift, sounds dramatic, maybe even controversial. But when you peel back the layers, look at the history, and examine the ecosystems behind these claims, a much larger story emerges. It's a story about national strategy, about necessity turning into creativity, about a culture built around rapid problem solving and high risk experimentation, and about how a small nation found a way to engineer outsized influence in fields that matter most in the 21st century, Let's begin with the exterior, the part the world sees first Israel's reputation as a technology powerhouse. Over the past decade, its tech sector has become not just vibrant, but gl globally dominant in categories like cybersecurity, semiconductor design, AI applications, medical technologies, and defense-related innovation. Startups appear almost overnight, scale quickly, and solve highly specific real-world problems with astonishing speed. This exterior view is shaped by open numbers, international investments, exponential growth in R&D centers from global giants, and a high density of patents relative to population size. For foreign observers, including countries such as France that have strong national pride in innovation, the speed and intensity of Israel's emergence has been shocking. Israel has become known as a place where cutting edge solutions are developed rapidly, deployed locally, and then exported internationally with remarkable momentum. But any exterior is only the shell. What really matters is the interior, the part that most outsiders don't see. And here, the interior environment that fuels Israel's tech ecosystem is surprisingly simple, a deeply ingrained culture of technical literacy, military service that emphasizes problem solving and technological competence, extremely tight collaboration between universities, government, and private companies, and a national mindset that prioritizes adaptability. The interior is compact, focused, and efficient. Many entrepreneurs start with shared experiences from elite technological units where they've learned to innovate under pressure, fix problems with minimal resources, and operate in environments where creativity is often more valuable than scale. And because the country is small, Communication between sectors is fluid, ideas move quickly, and projects evolve rapidly. This interior environment might be short on space, but it's gigantic in terms of impact. Performance is where things get truly interesting. In fields like cybersecurity, Israel has earned a global reputation for punching far above its weight. Many of the world's largest companies rely on Israeli solutions to defend against sophisticated digital threats. In AI, Israeli research labs and startups have produced applications used in agriculture, medicine, transportation, and automation. Their focus tends to be hyper-practical instead of building massive general purpose systems. Many of their products are tailored to solving narrow but extremely high value problems. This gives them a performance edge because solutions can be deployed faster, updated continuously, and adapted to customer needs with precision. That agile performance has been noted by analysts in the US and Europe who operate in much larger, more bureaucratic environments where scaling innovation is often slower. Israel's size gives it a unique advantage, the ability to test, 
refine, and scale technology at national level without the friction that comes with larger populations or multiple regulatory bodies. Safety, both literal and digital, is a central part of this narrative. Many of Israel's technology breakthroughs stem from national security pressures which force the development of new tools, new algorithms, and new defensive capabilities. Because the country must constantly assess threats, much of its technology is battle tested long before it reaches the commercial marketplace. This gives international customers a sense of reliability. They know the products have been produced in demanding real world conditions where failure is not an option. But beyond physical safety, there's also a cultural safety net that supports innovation. Talented engineers know they can move between military tech units, universities, and private companies without stigma. Investors feel confident that new startups will have strong mentorship and experienced leadership. This ecosystem creates a sense of stability that is rare in high pressure tech landscapes. When technology grows in an environment where risk is encouraged, but support is strong, breakthroughs become more common. Unique selling points are the part that has truly shocked countries like France and even raised eyebrows in the United States. One of Israel's biggest differentiators is its ability to merge disciplines, combining cybersecurity with artificial intelligence, defense technologies with consumer markets, medical innovations with data analytics. Instead of siloed industries, the country's tech environment is woven together like one massive multi-disciplinary lab. Another unique selling point is speed. Projects that might take three years in larger countries can often be completed in months. That level of velocity has become a competitive advantage, especially in emerging fields where being first matters. And then there's the mindset. Innovation in Israel is driven less by luxury markets and more by survival needs. This urgency produces technologies that are lean, practical, and incredibly robust. When France commented with surprise at Israel's pace, it wasn't merely about the sophistication of the products. It was about how fast they appeared, how quickly they scaled, and how globally relevant they became. Price is another interesting dimension, and here price doesn't mean a literal cost tag, but rather the cost of becoming a global tech leader. The United States invests massive public and private capital into its tech sector. France has similarly invested heavily in national digital sovereignty programs. Israel, however, has achieved disproportionate influence with far lower investment. Its price of innovation comes from its culture rather than its budget. The price is paid through mandatory service that builds technical foundations through educational systems that emphasize STEM proficiency from an early age, through startup ecosystems that encourage high levels of risk and through an environment where failure is not considered a setback, but part of the learning process. Israel's price advantage comes from efficiency rather than spending. Many global companies find Israeli solutions more cost effective, not just because the products may be cheaper, but because their deployment delivers faster returns and quicker problem resolution. As we reach the deeper layers of this analysis, it's important to acknowledge the broader context. When people claim that Israel has surpassed the US in certain technological fields, it does not mean the U.S. is no longer a global tech leader. The U.S. still dominates in scale global platforms, cloud infrastructure, and frontier-level AI research. But Israel has carved out specialized niches where its innovation is exceptionally strong and in some cases ahead of much larger nations. Countries like France, which traditionally pride themselves on advanced engineering and independent technological development, have publicly recognized Israel's accelerated growth. In Europe, this has triggered discussions about partnerships, digital sovereignty, and the need to streamline innovation pipelines. In the United States, 
it has sparked debates about how smaller, more agile nations can sometimes outperform even the biggest players in specific fields. This story is not about competition alone, it's also about collaboration. Many of the most influential US tech companies operate major R&D centers in Israel because they recognize the value of tapping into a fast moving high talent environment. France too has increased partnerships with Israeli tech firms in cybersecurity and medical innovation. What surprises foreign government officials is not that Israel is innovative, they've always known that, but that the scale of innovation has accelerated so dramatically in such a short period of time that it has forced major powers to rethink their strategies. Another part of the narrative that deserves attention is Israel's willingness to adopt and integrate technologies rapidly. While some nations spend years debating regulations or dealing with internal political disagreements, Israel often moves forward with pilot programs, national deployments, and commercial rollouts at remarkable speed. This rapid adoption cycle becomes a feedback loop. The faster technologies are used, the faster they can be improved and the more competitive they become. It's a national testbed effect that few countries can replicate. Many U.S. and European companies travel to Israel specifically to observe how new technologies function in a real-world environment where adoption is fast, feedback is instant, and iteration is constant. Now let's step back and try to understand the, the deeper philosophical reason why this small country has been able to make such an outsized impact. Innovation in Israel is not viewed as a luxury or a lifestyle ambition. It's viewed as a necessity for survival with limited natural resources, limited space, and constant security challenges. The country simply cannot afford to operate inefficiently. It must innovate. It must stay ahead. And that pressure has created generations of entrepreneurs who think differently about problems. Instead of asking, what if this doesn't work? They ask, what must we build so that it does work? This mentality shared widely across sectors is one of the biggest reasons why technology analysts claim Israel has surpassed other nations in select fields. It is a story of mindset as much as it is a story of machinery. As we approach the conclusion, the question becomes, what does this mean for the future? Will Israel continue rising? Will the US respond by becoming more agile? Will France reshape its approach to innovation? And what can everyday viewers learn from this? The answer is that the global technology race is not just about population size, budget, or resources. It's about culture, urgency, and adaptability. Israel's story shows that even a small country can transform its position in the world through determination collaboration, and relentless focus on solving real problems. It also shows that technological leadership is no longer guaranteed by size alone. Nations that move fast will define the future. In the end, the idea that Israel has surpassed the U.S. in certain technologies and shocked countries like France is not really a story of dominance. It's a story of acceleration, specialization, and strategic focus. It's a reminder that innovation thrives not only in giant corporate labs, but also in small, agile ecosystems where ideas move quickly and solutions are born from necessity. For viewers watching today, the takeaway is simple. No matter where you live or what you're building, the future belongs to those who innovate with urgency, experiment boldly, and adapt faster than the world expects. 